Dad's night, Dad's night to cook. It is Dad's night, Dad's night to cook. From the pantry he'll take a Loma book to see what we'll dine on tonight. What you gonna cook, Dad? What we gonna eat? His recipe's great, A it plus. is a must. When he cooks, he makes Both believe us. and trust. And a wonderful meal on the table. Yummy for a tummy. It is Dad's night to cook. <laughs> Now, for our fish, I'm using a tilapia, and you've seen what the recipe is calling for, for as far as I'm Mizzle Plus. What I did is, the tilapia usually comes attached, or, you know, I don't know if that was the right piece for it, but I just cut them in half so they could just be like little fillets. So, you can have a, a little generous amount. So, I'm just going to add my Mizzle Plus. It's not a lot of seasoning, but it'll take it. And because we're going to coat this instead of with flour, because I got a celiac person who can't eat flour I'm gonna coat my fish before I fry it with cornstarch mm -hmm. I know. it's a good technique if you have people who can't do the flour thing so you're gonna just season this really well just mix it up a little bit I don't do any of the the citrus stuff until after it's cooked so if you want a piece of wedge of lemon to coat on after it's been fried up, that is up to you. Okay, so let's get this. And then before we fry it, we're gonna coat it in some corn starch, right before we fry it. So you guys, I breaded my fish and I breaded it with corn starch. So what I do is I cook them on both sides, then I remove them, I cook the rest, and then I'll give them a second run through in the fryer and I'm frying tilapia today. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap this and I'm going to um, put the fish that already been fried back in for a second fry. So for my mac and cheese, what I did was I had the water boiling. You know, I always salt my water before I cook my, my possum. So I only cooked it for <clears throat> two quarters of the way that I normally would cook my pasta. I, it's, it's not only al dente, it's really al dente. Because um, what I do is when you cook your mac, when my macaroni cheese cooks in a, 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 a cheese bath, a cheese, I mean, just a shenanigans of cheese up in there. So what I do is I save a little bit of the water because one of the cheeses that we're gonna be using is cream cheese, but you kinda of need to melt the cream cheese before. So what I did was I reserved some of the pasta water. I'm gonna put my heat back on medium and I'm gonna put back some of the pasta water into my pot and I'm gonna add my cream cheese. I just have an eight block, eight ounce block of cream cheese. That's a lie, that's you just, whatever was left over in there. I don't know if it's a full eight block, but it doesn't really matter if it's a full eight block or not. I know I'm away talking and, and doing all the shenanigans and stuff like that. So we're gonna let this thing melt itself down. What I used was the box mac and cheese pasta because I like the pasta because it's elbow, but I like these little packs of cheese. And I put it in with the cream cheese to just Zhush it up a little bit and it's got nice flavor and whatnots and stuff. And then I'm gonna show you the rest of all the other cheeses we put into this thing. Now, let's talk about the butter while we're at it. Resolve yourself to know, and we're gonna use a lot of butter in here, like three quarters of a stick of butter up in there. Resolve yourself. That's my recipe calls for that. You see the you see the ingredients. It's it's it ain't fat free, it's free fat. Mm-hmm. Now, tell yourself you're going to go on a walk, on a run after you eat this. Tell yourself, even before you go to bed, just say, dream, I'm going to dream me running so you can get the extra steps in. And you run in your dreams because you're going to need it after you eat this mac and cheese. Like I said, we got our reserved pasta water. 
our cream cheese, and now I'm gonna add the packet powder cheese that you find in those fake mac and cheese boxes. Now, I say fake, but I use them because I like the little flavor these little cheese packets come with. It's really for my seasoning, you know? I would not serve anyone no mac and cheese from a box looking like, like that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna let this cream cheese melt and you're gonna make a nice, nice sauce, seasoned sauce. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna season it too much as you can see on the recipe that I'm gonna add some nutmeg and a little bit of salt and a lot of butter. Like I told you, three quarters of the stick gonna go up in this mother, okay? Melt that down. Now, as you can see, the cream cheese is starting to melt and I put two pats of butter in there just to incorporate it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the heat off and we're gonna add our pasta back to that sauce. We're just gonna incorporate our pasta back with this sauce and it's gonna get thick. Now for all of your um, cream cheese did not melt, don't worry, because it's gonna melt in the oven. And as you can see, the pasta sucked up all of that juice, but that's, don't you worry, we're gonna have more cheese and, and goodness to go with it, okay? So let's work on the milk portion that we're gonna mix into this before we put it in the oven to bake. Now, let's finish up this macaroni cheese. Often people ask me uh, when I take my macaroni cheese to functions or whatever, my gosh, where'd you get that recipe from? It's a combination. I've had many different cooking teachers. Like I learned from anybody. If you cook and you let me go into your kitchen, I'm gonna be all up in your grill trying to figure out what you're doing because I like to um, see what other people's techniques are and what they like to use. My recipe comes from a very sweet, sweet one of my favorite cooking um, and mentors, uh, Rosa Whitehead. I first met Rosa when I first had my, when I first went into the working force, I worked for my church. And one of my duties was to help Rosa in the kitchen for our Wednesday night family dinners. And you talking about cooking? She cooked for every function, every party. She was a whiz. And so I learned a lot of my techniques from her watching her and this particular mac and cheese recipe I got from her. The only thing that I omit is adding egg. Now she adds egg, I love it. It's great when you add egg to your mac and cheese. Mm, people be like, what the? I'm not gonna add it today because some of the people that I'm cooking for are vegan. <laughs> That's how you avoid all of that. Now you say, what they, how are they gonna eat the mac and cheese? They're not. I'm gonna make a side, separate side one and use that fake cheese, that vegan cheese. But they like it and that's what they can eat. So that's what I'm gonna make for them, okay? So, but I'm not gonna put it in my egg part because then I have vegetarians also and I want them to enjoy it. So, but anyway, so let's go and finish this. Now, I did not put in the recipe as you saw, and I did it on purpose. I did not put which cheese I use. Because which cheese you use is up to your particular taste. I found some in the refrigerator, some of that stuff, that Velveeta stuff. Mm-hmm. That Velveeta stuff does not go bad. I don't know how long this thing been in the refrigerator, but it's still good. So I got some Velveeta, I got some Pepper Jack, I got some extra sharp, and I got some Gouda for that extra pop. When you eat it, it's going to be like, what the hell? Anyway, so what I did was I got a bowl of milk. I particularly use evaporated milk. I know. Milk in a can just sounds crazy to folks. I know. But it's rich, thick, and delicious. But how do they keep that milk from going bad? Somebody write me and tell me because I don't know. But evaporated milk is good up in this mac and cheese. Anyway, evaporated milk. Now to my milk, I'm gonna add all my cheese. Just go ahead, pour it in there. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our pasta that's on the stove back in here. So add all your cheese. So now we're just gonna add the seasonings that we that you see I call for. So I'm just gonna use a teaspoon of paprika. I'm gonna use a teaspoon of salt because the, the pasta was salted already. And I am going to use 
two quarter teaspoons of black pepper, which makes a half a teaspoon. And the same for my nutmeg. When people taste this mac and cheese, and they're gonna try to figure out what the heck is up in this mac and cheese, it's the nutmeg. Ooh, you can smell it already. Now, I got my uh, uh, rest of the pat of butter in the freezer. I, I kind of diced it up and I put it in the freezer because I kind of want it to be a little f cold and frozen. So when it starts baking, it releases air and keeps this thing nice, moist, and juicy. The other thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add two tablespoons of dry parsley. It's just going to give it that green little flake. Um, it doesn't add a whole lot of flavor to what you want, but Miss Rosa did it. And so that, you know, I, I learned from one of the best. And this macaroni has not failed me yet. So that's what I do. I put it in. No rhyme or reason. It's a little spurred. All right, now we're going to mix the pasta, the rest of the pasta into this and put it in our baking dish and have it going. So that's my mac and cheese ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover it up with some tin foil because I don't want it to get brown too early. I don't want the cheese to get brown. So I just want it to cook and melt on its own heat from this liquid um, for about 40 minutes at about 360 oven. And then when it's about ready, I'll turn up the heat to about 375 and let it brown on top, okay? It is Dad's night. Dad's night to cook. From the pantry, he'll take a look. a book to see what we'll dine on tonight. What you gonna cook, Dad? What we gonna eat? His recipe's great. It a is a must. When he cooks, he makes believe and trust. And a wonderful meal on the table. Yummy for a tummy. It is Dad's night to 